I've had the privilege of being in and around banking for more than 50 years. Lots of changes during that time. We've gone from ledgers to laptops, typewriters to technology. One thing, however, remains the same. Banking is a people business, and I'll be talking with those people that make banking great here on Jack Rats with Modern Bankers. Hello, everybody. Jack Rance with Modern Bankers here, Jack Hubbard, along with my good friend and partner, Bryn Tillman. Hi, Bryn. Hi, Jack. I'm looking forward to ranting with you today. Well, it's an important subject, and people often say, well, what hat are you going to wear today? And today I'm not wearing any because the subject is pretty serious. Here's the deal. A student came up to me uh, at Graduate School of Banking and and basically said her CF, CEO would not allow any of their bankers to use LinkedIn at the bank. And his reasoning is because of security related issues. So today we're gonna talk about security in uh, on LinkedIn and it's a really important topic and you're very, very good at this topic, Bryn. So let's, let's dive into this. Talk first about security on LinkedIn and how safe the platform really is. Yeah, that's a great question, um, and especially for bankers. And more and more banks, obviously, are now opening up LinkedIn. But it was years and years that they wouldn't allow their bankers. And then eventually they said, okay, you can use it on your personal computer. But now you know, most banks have opened up, and they realize that this is a critical tool for business development and recruitment and so many other reasons. But security is really important. and and how secure LinkedIn is, is really how, how secure your bankers make it. There are absolutely things that we can do to make sure that all the platforms that we use are more secure. And we're going to go through some of the things today to do that. Here's the big thing, I think, Jack, is that banks need to have this part of their employee handbook on you know how to use LinkedIn and other social media tools. This needs to be part of the fabric of who they are. You know, they all, I would bet when email was launched, everyone was really, really worried about using email. And you know, now they even test, right? They'll they'll test, you know, do you click on bad emails, right? They have the IT department is out there making sure that everyone is secure. Email is essential to doing business. Well, so is LinkedIn now. And so it, it's up to the bank, really, in what they do to make this secure, because LinkedIn does have the tools to do that. Let's, let's start with the basics. If I join LinkedIn, mm-hmm. um, one of the things bankers don't realize is that LinkedIn is sort of like any tool, like a Microsoft that you pull out of the box and, uh, uh, and put on your computer. It's there are a lot of default settings that LinkedIn says, OK, here's here's what you're going to get when we when you start on LinkedIn. But there are a lot of things that people should be doing to customize how they're using LinkedIn. And since we're talking about security today, Bryn, the first one is so powerful and it's two step verification. And a lot of people don't even know you can do this on LinkedIn, number one. And even if they did, they wouldn't know how to get there. Talk about two-step verification. Yeah. Well, actually, let's just talk for a second about how to get there. Because you said, yeah. So when you are on your LinkedIn profile, there is a little me icon at the top right. When you click on that, you'll see settings and privacy. When you get to settings and privacy, you're going to see all of like sign-in and security, visibility, data privacy. Spend some time looking through that, right? Like that's really, really important. But sign in and security is where you're going to find two-step verification on the bottom. Two-step verification is simply this. If someone logs into you, including you, uh, you will get either an email or a text based on what you choose with a code that you need to enter in order to get into the profile. Why is this critically important? Well, there are password breaches. They, they're just are breaches. And, you know, one of the things, side note that you can do is when you change your email password for your bank, change your LinkedIn password. 
so that you keep that changing all the time because that makes sense. But if someone does breach your password, they can't get into your account without that code. So turn on that two-step verification. Mine goes to mobile, but you can decide where you want that to go. And is it true, and, and I'm asking because this happened to me, is it true that if somebody's trying to get into your LinkedIn account, you'll be notified of a code that you're supposed to put in? Uh, right. And that happened to me. So uh, I was able, because I have two-step verification, to right. say, no, not so much. And I went in and I changed my password. So you're notified with your two-step uh, verification. Brand. Yeah. Even when you log in, you're going to get that code, right? So it's great. Um, and you cannot access your LinkedIn profile without that code. Um, and, and if you have to change the password, then then go ahead and do that. But I've gotten that without my permission before. And that's right. You go, First thing you do is go change your password. Yeah, it happens. It happens. And, and LinkedIn has done everything possible to make its platform safe. It has every reason to do that, both from a revenue perspective and a, a reputational risk perspective. There are 950 million people around the world on LinkedIn. The last thing they want is, is all kinds of reputational risk and, and challenges around that. Well, you mentioned a key word, and that's profile. And there are a lot of fake profiles out there, Bryn. I'm curious, maybe next week, we ought to take a, a real good dive into fake profile because you, you have some real good expertise there. Yeah, I mean, the fake profiles are dangerous from the perspective of if you connect with them, they now have access to a lot on your account. Um, I had a situation where I connected. I don't know. It was definitely a fake profile. Um, and I don't know if it was competition. I don't know if it was hackers. But what happened is they started connecting with my connections, letting them know that I gave them permission to do it when I did it. <coughs> Excuse me. And what ended up happening, and I found out, because they were inviting these folks to a local event. Hmm. And they actually connected with my, um, my, my Finnish exchange student, who, although still had Philadelphia on her LinkedIn profile, was now back in Helsinki. And she replied to me going, yeah, I'd love to see you, but I, I don't think I can make this event. And I'm like, I didn't invite anyone to this. But when I went into my sales navigator, I actually saw these invitations. So they were working in my sales navigator. It was bizarre. So um, that was the hack. Oh, I just conflated two things. So one was they went out. I got hacked once and they were in my sales navigator. So that was bad. That was pre two-step verification. The second time, I just put two stories together. The second time they were just inviting all of my, my connections and I didn't even know that was happening. So that, this is why I'm so adamant about settings and privacy because I've had this truly affect me before. Um, and so whatever it is that you do, make sure you're not connecting with people that have fake profiles. And you're right. I think that's a great idea, Jack. Next week, let's deep dive and how to spot a fake profile. Oh, awesome. Uh, well, well, one of the reasons that sometimes we have to record these things uh, mm -hmm. is, is that we both travel quite a lot. Yes. And yes. so um, not always, some are live, some are, you know, recorded, um, yes. but, but we access LinkedIn from remote sites and it could be hotels. When I was up at graduate school of banking, yes. it's a conference center, et cetera. Um, there is an option to sign out of all these remote sessions. And you know what, Bryn, I forget to do it. Why should we do it and how do we do it? Yeah, so there you, it's interesting. If you go into your settings um, and in that same sign in and security, there is, um, I think it's third from the top, is where you're signed in. And this is going to give you active sessions. Now, it's interesting. 
absolutely where you're signed in can be affected by mobile. If you're somewhere else and you signed in to your mobile and it's going to a different server. So there are sometimes I'll look and go, boy, I wasn't, you know, I didn't have my laptop there, but I did have my mobile there. So that if you sign out of that, it may not have been a risk. It could have been you. But there are a lot of times that um, I'll use LinkedIn as a sign-in platform. So it'll say, for example, we're on Restream. And sometimes it'll say, sign into Restream with your LinkedIn profile. It comes up and you see the LinkedIn logo and the Restream logo and you allow it. Well, you are now logged into your LinkedIn with that third-party app. That will also come up here. So there are a lot of times where you may do that and you only want it access one time, but they're still logged into your LinkedIn profile in that third-party app. So when you go to this active sessions area, you can actually end the active session with one click of a button and you can delete um, sessions as well. It may log you out of your desktop. So make sure before you do that, you do know your password because you may have to log back in. Yes. And uh, I'll give you a, a great example. I just went to what you suggested because I don't think to do this and, and many of us don't. So I, I'm logged into five different sessions and one of them two months ago was near Frankfurt, Germany. So I'm going to log out of that one. Uh, and yep. it's, it's a really, really good catch to every once in a while go in and do that. It's so easy to do. It really is. Uh, let's yeah. talk about uh, another subject. We get so many spam invitations. Let me tell you about one I got today. I won't tell you the name because it could be a real person. It's a female. Uh, she's a founder, investment partner, medical aesthetic, uh, a sesiologist, and an angel investor. She only has 65 uh, connections and she went to the University of Cambridge, allegedly. So she's been following me for a couple of weeks and wanted to reach out to connect. I don't know what her location is, and um, she has no connections to anybody that I'm connected to, so we don't have any joint connections that I'm aware of. To me, that is a spam invitation. There are tons of these going on, Bryn. How is this happening? Well, I mean, that one's an easy one, right? They, they and, and when we talk about fake profiles, we'll really be able to drill down on that even more. But um, I think the bigger issue is the automation that, so, so what she's doing is she found you, she wants to sell to you or spam to you or whatever that might be. That we can, you know, I mean, that's where we can control not connecting with people. And there are definitely options um, to communicate before connecting as well. But what's most interesting is if she has 65 connections and she's not in banking, why she decided to go after you. Very interesting. Um, but she did. It's the automation. They have these fake profiles that are connecting with hundreds and thousands of connections. And um, it's really hard to, and we'll go through it, but it's hard to identify if they're real or not. So yeah, um, yeah it's, it's a problem. And there's, a, you know, even real people spamming is a problem. So yes. fake yes. people yes. spamming is even bigger. Oh, no, that's for sure. And when we talk about fake profiles, I'll tell you a couple of stories about something where a banker just ignored a profile that was real and it, it, it turned out to be a pretty sad story for the banker. But um, so, so there are, just because you don't know someone doesn't mean you shouldn't connect with them. But you do have to, as we're going to talk about in the next program, do a lot of good due diligence. You know, I always tell lenders, if you're going to make a loan, you really need to do a lot of due diligence. And I don't think it's any different on LinkedIn because you, you really, once it's in your a cadre of profiles, um, you know, you forget about them and they could be doing a lot of things like was done to you and you mm -hmm. don't even 
you don't even know that. Well, yeah. I want to wrap this up, Bryn, by asking about, you kind of talked about a little bit about privacy and settings, but are there others that bankers should mm-hmm. definitely know about um, that they should be kind of taking a look at? I mean, there are a ton. Um, uh, uh, I would I would just say go through all of your privacy and settings. There's account preferences, um, how you want your location to show up, a lot of data privacy, which demographics and all kinds of other things that you can actually control. And it also gives you the opportunity to back up your profile there. Um, and notifications. Not that this is privacy, but it's definitely settings. How do you want to be notified? Who do you want to be notified of? Um, And visibility is another one. So spend some time. You know, when we launch a corporate training, we have a checklist of all the settings that we want them to click through and update. Because this is the foundation before anything else. We want to make sure that your settings and privacy are set up for success. Yeah, it's measured twice, cut once, uh, and uh, making sure that before you get out there uh, and become very active on LinkedIn, or if you are very active on LinkedIn and maybe have forgotten the, the basics, which is which is this settings and privacy, um, go back, go back and look at it. Uh, yeah. it. It becomes very, very important. Awesome. Well, thanks, Jack. It was a Jack. great program and it was timely. And the reason that we did this was because we wanted to make sure that we acknowledged that a banker said, look, I need a program on this. Give me some foundation. Give me some basics. And that's what this program is all about. We wanted to make sure that we have a lot of foundational elements in this and to make it very, very uh, practical. So thank you, Bryn. We'll see you next week. And we're going to talk about dive deeply into fake profiles. So make sure you join us next week on Jack Rants with Bryn. Thanks for joining us for Jack Rants with Brim, brought to you by our good friends at Vertical IQ and RelPro. We're live on LinkedIn every Thursday at noon Eastern time, helping bankers turn connections into conversations. Don't miss an episode. Visit themodernbanker.com slash TMB podcast. Leave us a review if you would. You can also listen to this program and the new Jack Rants with Modern Bankers on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and iHeartRadio. We're on YouTube as well. Subscribe at youtube.com slash at the modern banker. Finally, don't forget, make today and every day a great client day. Mm-hmm.